has been assisting aviation for quite some time now. It, ha it funded the study that established the YD. It has funded aircraft purchases for some airlines and would like to do it for more airlines. They have funded infrastructure. I believe they have done a lot for African aviation, and I think we should say thank you, merci, and karibu. Whatever. <laughs> I believe you have heard the first session. They have covered most of the things that are necessary. They were talking on policy and regulatory requirements and how to improve those. And all of a sudden, with questions coming from the floor, they have been addressing issues that the airlines should address. So what we'll do is we'll try to cover some of those issues and at the same time see what the airlines can do to really improve connectivity and also make sure affordability will stimulate the traffic within Africa. I believe the African uh, trade arrangement that has been made does not work without a proper connectivity. The people-to-people -people connection that Africa wants to create will not be realized without having a proper connectivity. And 20, 30 years ago, people were talking of United States of Africa. I think gradually we seem to have given up on that. But if we continue to exist as 55 nations, our chances of growth, our chances of really trading between ourselves and growing will be limited. Therefore, so that idea of united Africa should not be abandoned. And the airlines can make, aviation can make that a possibility. So in this afternoon discussion, we have experts from the industry who will be sharing their ideas and at the same time proposing what should be done in Africa to improve connectivity and affordability in aviation. And we are lucky, we have a group of panelists who are fully informed in these areas. I will call on the panelists to come to the panel, to the uh, to the area, these are Ato Mesfun Taso, Group CEO of Ethiopian Airlines, the largest airline in Africa. <laughs> Mr. Laurent Laxon, CEO of Air Côte d'Ivoire, come on board. Mr. Thomas. Commercial Director of Airport Services Association. And last but not least, Welcome. the very man who heads the Association of African Airlines, Abdurrahman Berke. We will now get into the discussion I'm not going to sit because if I sit, they may get a cover. And 
I will sit here, stare at them, and ask them different questions. And I will start with atmosphere. Given the position of ET as the largest carrier in Africa, given the fact that you are covering most African cities, how do you leverage your position to improve connectivity, to improve reduction of fare through improvement of services and at the same time increasing frequency and reducing cost? That is question number one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Girma. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today and share the experience of Ethiopian Airlines to this forum. Uh, as Mr. Girma indicated, Ethiopian Airlines today is the leading African airline in Africa. Today, we have a very big network covering 140 international destinations, out of which 61 cities are in Africa, distributed in 40 African countries. We have designed our network in such a way that we operate in two banks in Addis Ababa. Means uh, this network was originally designed to connect Africa with the rest of the world means uh, all our flights into African cities depart from Addis Ababa in the morning and bring passengers to the evening. In the evening, we dispatch all our flights connecting Africans uh, to the rest of the world outside Africa. And in the morning, all our customers from all over the world outside Africa arrive in the morning in Addis and again feed to the African departing flights. That is how it was designed. So the major focus was connecting Africa to the world, but this network is still used to provide intra-Africa connectivity in such a way that Africans arrive in Addis Ababa in the evening, lay over in Addis, and make their connection to the 61 cities into Africa. That has been the case, but as you may agree, this is not the best connectivity for Africans. So during the last 10 years, we expanded our schedule by adding flights departing from Addis Ababa into African cities in the evening. Means Africans arriving in Addis will have immediate connectivity to several of the African cities in the evening with a connectivity of, of between 30 minutes and two to three hours transit time in Addis. This connectivity is growing uh, by adding more flights. In addition to that, we have created what you call a third bank, a midday bank, where we uh, depart flights to African destinations in late, uh, no, early uh, afternoon, which will return in the evening to get connection to African cities. So now, we have enhanced our network and schedule to provide a more convenient connectivity uh, to Africa, within Africa, with the shortest transit time in Addis. However, this could not grow more because of traffic rights restrictions within Africa. That is one challenge we have. So 
to address this problem, we have partnered with other African regional airlines, which we helped to establish, to develop more convenient regional connectivity. We have today three partners. One is Askai, based in Togo. The second one is Malawi Airlines in Lilongwe, and the third one is a small one in Zambia, Lusaka. If we take the case of Askai, you may know that Askai, based in Lome, is today connecting 27 cities within 12 hours. Any African from West or Central Africa can fly to the other 26 cities within the same day with a transit time of uh, not more than two hours in Lome. This is a very good connectivity, a regional connectivity. But this is not enough. We have synchronized the schedule of Ethiopian Airlines and Aska Airlines so that they feed each other at four cities in West and Central Africa so that passengers from Africa can make their connection to other cities in Africa not covered by the schedule of Aska. Okay, Thomas Fed. That's good. Connectivity, you answered. Price. Price. How does that allow passengers to travel at a price that they can afford? Thank you again. Uh, I agree that ticket fares in Africa are more expensive than in other parts of the world. And particularly, fares in West Africa are much more expensive than even East and Southern Africa. Why? One, as has been mentioned in the previous panel discussion, a big contributor of this higher price is the high operating cost. This high operating cost is composed of one, for example, fuel. I can give you figures. In Africa, fuel price, jet fuel price per gallon varies from $3 in some countries up to $7. That is what we are paying in some cities. In Europe and Middle East, it is always less than $2.8 per gallon. Because of this, and because Ethiopian Airlines is operating a lot in Africa, our fuel cost compared to our total operating cost is 45%. Compare this with what is the norm in Europe, North America, Middle East, which is in the range of 25%, but not exceeding 30% at all. So this is impacting fares in, to travel in Africa. The second one is taxes. It was mentioned earlier. Uh, the tax component of the ticket fare is much higher in Africa than in other parts of the world. But this is not the, the end of it. In Africa, airlines are asked to pay profit tax in different countries in addition to what they pay in their home countries. This is very unique in Africa. We don't have this problem everywhere, wherever we fly, but also only in Africa. In addition to that, the way that profit tax is calculated is very, very strange. Uh, sometimes they ask to pay us a lot of money, which is very difficult. You may have heard that some airlines had to stop flying to some African countries because of this unbearable tax. So this has contributed also to the high fare. But it is not only the high 
operating costs that increases the ticket prices. There are other factors as well. Uh, I can mention some of them. One is economies of scale. The air transport industry needs economies of scale because there is a lot of fixed cost in it. In Africa, airlines are very, very small. Some operate with three airplanes, some with eight airplanes. So their fixed cost component, when added into the ticket, the ticket fare will be increased. This is the second one. The third is, uh, do you know ticket fare is not determined based on cost plus margin formula? It's not the norm. The normal uh, process to establish ticket fare is competition. Ethiopian Airlines establishes ticket fare by determining how much are passengers paying for Emirates? How much they uh, <laughs> charge it by Turkey? Yeah, the others also do that. So competition will also help to improve ticket fares. So there okay. may be some more factors, but these are the major ones. Thank you very much. Mr. Masson indicated that the reason why the fare is high is because the costs are high. At some point, I will ask somebody else what they can do to get, to, to get the governments to reduce these costs. Some of them are unreasonable, but we'll get to that. Air Côte d'Ivoire. What are the challenges that your airline faces in growing its route network? And what are you doing to overcome that? Because it is when your route network expands and you grow that you give better connectivity and even reduce price. But the basic thing would have to be there, your own growth. What are you doing to challenge that, to, to, to overcome those challenges? Thank you very much, Ato Gyama. Um, please allow me to, to switch in French because I think the topic is very important and I will be very clear if I express myself in French and to speak with my heart. I do not want to repeat what has been said by the group CEO of Echo of uh, okay. Ethiopia, mm -hmm. but we are having the same problem. No, I have to switch in, in French. <laughs> <laughs> no, je n'ai pas envie de, 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 de répéter ce que disait le groupe CEO d'Ethiopian. Mais pour moi, il faut diviser l'Afrique en quatre. Nous avons d'un côté, quand on parle de transport aérien, évidemment, nous avons d'un côté le nord de l'Afrique, où vous avez des compagnies qui vivent plus ou moins, Royal Air, Maroc, Égypte, Air Algérie. Vous avez l'est, où vous avez des compagnies qui vivent, et une compagnie qui fait plus que vivre, Il faut le reconnaître qu'il est une des meilleures au monde, c'est Éthiopienne. Vous avez le sud, où on avait euh, South African Airways, qui bat de l'aile, mais qui existe. Et puis, vous avez la région qui est la plus difficile de toute l'Afrique. C'est celle qui part de Nouachok à Kinshasa. Voici 22 ans que Air Africa a disparu. 22 ans. En 22 ans, les tentatives pour créer des compagnies ont existé. Il y a au moins une quarantaine de compagnies qui ont été créées en 22 ans. Le Sénégal en a fait trois ou quatre, soit la quatrième. La Côte d'Ivoire, pour parler de nous-mêmes, nous sommes à la troisième version. Les Maliens ont fait quatre. Au Togo, ils en ont fait deux. La deuxième vie. Je peux vous citer comme ça jusqu'à la fin. Toutes ces compagnies n'ont pas tenu plus de sept ans. 
7 ans, c'était le maximum. Alors, quand vous posez la question euh, très rapide de dire comment est-ce qu'on améliore la connectivité et quels sont les challenges auxquels on fait face, je pense qu'on on va aller vite si on ne pose pas les vrais problèmes. Le problème de l'existence des compagnies aériennes en Afrique de l'Ouest et du centre, le tout premier, le premier challenge, c'est la taille du marché. Tout le monde dit qu'il y a du trafic. J'écoute souvent euh, mon ami Ecoto euh, Romain me dit « Laurent, ouvre telle route, il y a du trafic. Ouvre telle, il y a du trafic. » Mais je vais vous donner quelques chiffres. Moi, j'aime bien parler avec des chiffres. Si vous prenez la région dont je viens de vous parler, nous sommes plus de 500 millions d'habitants. Plus de 500 millions. Vous prenez le Nigeria, 200 et quelques. Vous prenez le, le Congo, peut-être 100, 100 et quelques. Et tout le reste, c'est 20, 10 millions nous sommes à peu près 25, 26 pays. Ça fait plus de 500 millions d'habitants. Vous savez combien de passagers voyagent, ou ils enfin, euh, intra-Afrique de l'Ouest et du centre Moins de 2,5 millions. Pinote. Il n'y a rien du tout. Une étude que nous avions faite quand j'étais chez Ascaï, avec Théolde et Boussera, avait montré que sur cette région, 50% des routes point à point, c'est-à-dire quand je prends euh, Abidjan-Bamako, Ouagalomé, euh, N'Djamena, euh, Libreville, 50% ont moins de 67 passagers par jour. Moins de 67. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y a aucune raison économique pour une compagnie aérienne de mettre OXB, euh, OXB c'est Guinée-Bissau, euh, je vais donner Niamey. Parce qu'il y a Pinot, il y a peut-être 5-10 passagers par jour. Il y a, donc, premier problème, c'est le trafic. Il n'y en a pas. Alors, il faut se poser de la question de savoir pourquoi il n'y a pas. J'ai entendu quelqu'un, le monsieur qui était assis le dernier là-bas, qui disait, oui, pour stimuler le marché, il faut mettre de la fréquence, il faut ceci, ça va stimuler. Non, je ne partage pas ce point de vue. Certes, la fréquence peut stimuler, mais avant, il faut se poser la question de savoir pourquoi les gens voyagent. Et les raisons pour lesquelles les gens voyagent, est-ce qu'on les trouve dans notre région Les Africains qui voyagent en Afrique de l'Ouest et du centre entre eux voyagent essentiellement pour des raisons professionnelles. Il n'y a pas de tourisme intra-Afrique, il n'y a pas d'échanges commerciaux, il n'y a aucune raison économique de voyager. Les, vo les gens voyagent quand ils sont contraints de voyager. Première chose, il appartient à nos pays d'avoir plus de coopération sud-sud de créer les conditions pour qu'il y ait des mouvements. Trafic, premier point. Deuxième challenge important, M. Mesfield l'a dit, très important, ce sont les coûts de production. Il a été gentil. Je vais titiller un peu mon ami Kone euh, de la SECNA. Une étude faite par Ethiopian Airlines, par vous-même, vous pouvez la retrouver, elle avait été faite par Théolde, Thé qu'il qu m'avait partagé quand j'étais chez Ascaï, montrait que pour le contrôle aérien, la SECNA qui couvre notre région dans laquelle nous sommes facturait entre 5 et 10 fois, je dis bien entre 5 et 10 fois ce qui était facturé dans l'Est de l'Afrique. Peut-être parce que la SECNA aussi a des coûts qui sont 5-10 fois supérieurs, j'en sais rien. Donc les coûts de production ici sont hyper chers. Très, très cher. Il a parlé du carburant, qui des fois est 30-40% plus cher. On peut vous parler du catering, qui est beaucoup plus cher. Mais pourquoi les coûts sont aussi chers C'est ça la question. Les coûts sont aussi chers parce que l'Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre, nous, on a créé un modèle qui est unique à l'Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre. Unique. On a dit une compagnie aérienne, elle doit évoluer en modèle stand-alone. Stand-alone, je ne sais pas comment on peut le dire... Euh en anglais, en français, c'est isolé. On dépouille la compagnie de toutes les activités qui peuvent produire de l'argent, on les sous-traite par des délégations de services publics, on impose des monopoles dans les aéroports et ces monopoles-là imposent des coûts de production aux compagnies aériennes. Vous prenez l'assistance, un avion de 110 tonnes, pendant qu'il va coûter 300 000 francs CFA, je parle en CFA, okay. 
Thank you very much. Okay. You want, you want, you want yeah. to finish? Okay. Yeah. Vous prenez l'assistance, nous, pendant qu'on est à 300 000, c'est un avion de... Enfin, pendant que c'est 300 000 au niveau mondial, c'est un avion de 110 tonnes. L'Afrique de l'Ouest et du centre, c'est 1,2 million. Alors, la solution sur les coûts, c'est d'abord au niveau des États, de trouver la formule de casser tous ces monopoles. Moi, j'entends la BAD qui dit qu'il faut ouvrir le ciel. Avant d'ouvrir le ciel, ouvrons le sol. Ouvrons le sol, libéralisons l'assistance, libéralisons le catering, libéralisons tous ces coûts pour qu'il y ait de la compétition. Voilà. Donc, il y a un certain nombre de euh, préalables qui, tant qu'ils ne sont pas réglés, ne permettront pas aux compagnies d'Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre d'exister. Et je finis là-dessus. Alors, on me dit de me mettre en compétition avec Ethiopian Airlines. Pour moi, je, ça me fait rigoler. Ce que vous dites, Ethiopian dit, je respecte, mais c'est comme si je demandais à Usain Bolt, sur un parcours de 100 mètres, de courir avec mon fils qui vient de naître et qui ne sait pas courir. Et je dis, oui, mettez-les, et puis ils n'ont qu'à courir le 100 mètres. À la fin, je demande à mon fils, mais qu'est-ce que tu as fait Pourquoi Usain Bolt t'a dépassé on a un problème. Donc, euh, voilà, tout le monde en sourit. Les vrais sujets sont à adresser. Il faudrait à rester chacun dans les intérêts qui le concernent, de dire la libéralisation, les droits de trafic, les ceci, les cela. Posons les vrais sujets et adressons-les. Merci. Thank you very much. Now, 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 airlines are saying there isn't enough traffic, there is too much charge by government, ground services is monopoly, fuel price is high, therefore don't dream of reducing fare. Uh, that are we right. going to accept that? Okay, we'll come back to that. That leads me to, to the next question. Ground handling in most airports in Europe, Asia, and even in some African airports, there are, there are more than one handling agents. But in many African country, in the African airports, there is a monopoly. Because it is monopoly, it charges whatever it likes. Because it is a monopoly, they give you an inferior service. So airlines are punished twice. And the volume does not allow at some airports to have two, three handling agents. Now, ASA, How, what can your association do to improve the ground handling charges and at the same time improve the service at each airport? Short of multiplying the number of handling agents when there isn't enough traffic. What can you do as an association? Yes. Um, <clears throat> do you all, accept that monopoly situation is causing a problem, first of all? Okay. Uh, yes, this is certainly, certainly um, one major issue that I will address. First of all, thank you so much for um, inviting the association to um, this forum. It's um, uh, the um, Aviation Services Association um, is currently with uh, 70 ground handlers um, as full members, 12 of which are headquartered in Africa. Now, we are looking at around 85 million passengers in 2023 traveling in Africa. And um, we're looking at 54 countries within Africa, and we're looking at 84 ground handlers altogether, some of which are headquartered outside of Africa, some of them here. So that means roughly one million passengers handled by one ground handler. So in our thinking, and um, when we look around in other geographies, 
um, it's not sustainable. Now, I also um, share your views that half of the, around half of the countries in the country have somehow a monopole uh, situation at hand. And um, this, is, um, this is not um, giving the required service, you're right. And why is that? The first question is, do we need to, do, do these countries believe that ground handling is, is a national asset? Now, I would understand that there are national flag carriers, such as Ethiopian Airlines, and, uh, and that is a, a good thing to have probably, but ground handling shouldn't be. Ground handling um, should be liberalized, and we can look at the European Commission Directive uh, in which licenses are given out, which usually around seven years of uh, concession, and, uh, and that would certainly allow that um, airports are not holding back spending their profit margins on um, latest technologies for uh, ground handling equipment, which they should. Um, there would be a, uh, several ground handlers in one airport providing these services, and it would certainly allow um, this to be done at fair market prices. Um, we're looking at approximately 8% of what the handling charges um, should be costing an, an airline for a turnaround. Um, that, you may argue, is um, um, negligible. But there are some operating costs which are beyond the control of any airline. 35, 40% could be the fuel costs. Now, if you take out these, these kind of um, OPEX, then it is no longer negligible on what is being um, paid for the ground services. And um, we are right now um, conducting with uh, a new member the um, data for Africa as well of what the real costs really are, and we are very glad to share that with the, with the um, uh, development bank. So um, overall, I have to say, we had the big industry topics, um, which were sustainability and digitalization. Um, this is on um, carbon offsetting, and this is on the electric equipment and all of those topics which are very important. Now, this is where the airports and the, uh, and the, the ground handlers and aviation service providers should be working on together to make this happen. But again, I think um, a, key, um, a key measure is the liberalization of this market and uh, to see how this is done. And then we can standardize the training as is being done by the IATA um, uh, airport handling manual, um, chapter 11 and um, how we basically may en ensure that we provide uh, standardized training to the ground handling and ensure um, safe um, aircraft uh, operation on the ground. Thank you very much. This brings me to the Secretary General of AFRA. <coughs> he has many airlines who are his members, from the discussion that we had so far, whether it is ET or Air Corps Rivard, the picture that we got is we are barely giving service. The money is not good enough. The traffic is not big enough. Therefore, yes, we'll try to connect but we cannot reduce the price. That is the type of thing that we got. AFRA should be able to do something. What are you doing with your carriers? If it is an issue of monopoly at an airport, if it is a government tax, AFRA should be the one that should contact the different governments, contact AFCAC, contact ICAO, and create a conducive atmosphere for African airlines to serve the continent. What are you doing in that line? Okay, thank you, uh, moderator. Our role is not uh, easy. As you said, uh, you are the Association of African Airlines. We have Ethiopian Airlines. We have also very smaller operators. And sometimes 
the interests can be different. What we are doing as uh, an association, we are working on uh, advocacy. When uh, you talk about uh, taxes and charges, this is something we have been doing ever alone, or many times with uh, Ayata, to see how we can uh, make sure that uh, taxes and charges as, are at a level which is um, um, adequate for uh, uh, operations. And sometimes it's not easy because when you are aware of an uh, increase on taxes, sometimes it's like uh, the decision has already been enacted by a decree and it's uh, difficult for us to, to change things. Regarding um, traffic rights, what we do, we have um, a quarterly survey among all our members, and here again, we work through advocacy with the African Civil Aviation Commission to push to negotiate with state because in many cases, it is in some states which have signed in Satan and they are not complying. I want uh, on Satan to say something. Satan is a code to open to liberalize. But I think it's also important sharing what Air um, Code said. It's important to see airlines sitting and trying to cooperate when an uh, airline wants to come in a country and uh, open routes. I'm saying that because I did it when I was CEO of Air Burkina with Askai. Askai wanted to operate some of the routes. My airline was operating. We had a lot of meetings. Mr. Busera was uh, the CEO of uh, Aska at that time. And we agreed on a common network. And then we went to a civil aviation to say, the airline has agreed, now you can, open, uh, you, 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 you can uh, give author authorization. I want also to talk about um, ground handling. Ground handling, there is something very important to look at when we talk about the connectivity, regional connectivity. This is the tarification of ground handling. Sometimes it takes an airline to um, give the revenue of 10 to 15 passengers to pay the ground handling. When you are operating a 50-seater or a 70-seater, this is an, a problem. And we need this smaller aircraft size for some kind of traffic because the volume of traffic is very low in some routes. Now, how to stimulate the traffic? For me, the best element to look at is the GDP per capita. In Africa, it's only 15% of the global average. So it impacts also the affordability of air transport for African citizens. So for me, the economy also is impacting the air traffic volume as well. The connectivity can also stimulate the economies of African um, countries. I believe that all stakeholders need really to sit, talk, and agree how to improve that situation. That is the reason in June 2022, we organized in Nairobi, Afra Ostedit, a meeting of all stakeholders to look at all the impediments on the air transport and see how we can have a roadmap and implement it. Unfortunately, I can say that we have not been able since two years after 
the laboratory to implement fully the roadmap. But we have seen some progress. We are uh, implementing as AFRA what we can implement. And also we are working with all stakeholders willing to implement that, uh, that roadmap. Thank you very much. You know, there is something that nobody is so, to, to talking about. An airline like Ethiopian Airline wants to compete with the Emirates of this world, with, uh, with, with uh, uh, other big carriers from outside the continent. Atomasvin clearly indicated that his airline will operate from a point in West Africa directly to Addis, connect to other continents, or from South Africa to Addis, directly to another continent. And the traffic that it connects within Africa is from east to west, from north to south. Within West Africa, it cannot connect because it has to go for the long haul flights. But then, for that, they will have to work closely with smaller carriers in the region. The smaller carriers bring traffic from the smaller cities to a hub, and then the bigger carriers can pick the traffic from there and take them the long way. Those milk run short distances that are not covered today, which makes it very difficult for passengers to travel directly from one point to the other, can only materialize if the smaller carriers grow to really serve that. The big carriers have abandoned that indirectly. So what is Air, Ivar, Air, Air Côte d'Ivoire do to really sustain that? If equipment is your problem, and if, for example, African Development Bank tomorrow says, okay, if you cannot get aircraft on lease, I will create a situation for you to get an aircraft. We'll get you a leasing. Will you be able to take up on that and improve interconnectivity within the region itself? Okay, merci, uh, Monsieur le Moderateur. Vous savez, ce que vous dites confirme ce que je disais. Il faut regarder une compagnie aérienne non pas uniquement comme un instrument pour transporter des personnes, mais comme un outil de développement et de création de richesses pour les pays dans lesquels ces compagnies existent. J'ai envie de vous retourner la question. Qu'entendez-vous par petite compagnie Est-ce à dire que nous, comme je disais, c'est la course entre Hudson Bolt et mon fils Est-ce à dire que parce que nous nous sommes petits aujourd'hui, nous sommes condamnés à rester comme des petits Ou bien nous devons penser à grandir C'est ça, première question. Parce que quand vous dites euh, malheureusement ou heureusement, moi j'étais chez Askai avec vous d'ailleurs, pour travailler sur le projet Iti e et Askai. Et je m'occupais du programme avec Frédéric et dans de, bien d'autres choses. Le programme que nous avons construit n'a pas été construit pour Askai, mais principalement pour alimenter les vols d'Ethiopiennes. Donc c'est un programme en X, pour parler technique, qui fait que tous les vols arrivent entre midi et deux pour connecter Ethiopiennes. Askai est bâti ainsi pour supporter euh, Ethiopiennes. Mais vous ne pouvez pas, ça pose, je vois euh, votre question, vous ne pouvez pas demander à Air Côte d'Ivoire de, de, de devenir un feeder pour Ethiopian quand Ethiopian n'a pas de flexibilité sur elle-même sa route. Je vous donne un exemple concret. La seule façon pour Air Côte d'Ivoire de remplir ses avions, c'est de faire du hub and spoke. On n'a pas le choix, parce qu'il n'y a pas de trafic. Quand il n'y a pas de trafic, 
avant de faire mon vol qui part à Dakar, je suis obligé d'attendre mes avions qui arrivent de Lomé, de Cotonou, de toutes ces destinations-là, pour que chacune de ces personnes, même si elles me ramènent 10 personnes, si j'ai 10 euh, euh, pays derrière, ça me fait 100, je vais compléter aux 50 que j'ai à Abidjan pour faire mes 150. Vous me dites, oui, ça c'est bien, mais comme moi, éthiopienne, j'arrive ici à midi, n'attends pas, va me chercher des passagers à Lagos pour venir alimenter mon vol qui va à New York. Mais quand je vais faire ça, je n'alimente plus mon Dakar, je n'alimente plus mon Bamako, je fais du point à point. Je vous ai dit tout à l'heure que le point à point est trop faible pour que nous puissions le servir sans le hub and spoke. Alors la question pour nous, je finis, la question pour nous, pour adresser cette situation-là, la BAD peut nous donner des avions si elle veut, ça, ça ne regarde que la BAD. Nous, ce qu'on veut, c'est d'avoir un modèle qui marche pour toute la région. Ce que nous disons, c'est que si nous devons alimenter la région, l'Éthiopien aussi doit faire un effort. Ce n'est pas parce qu'Éthiopien est Usain Bolt que Usain Bolt va arriver et dire aux autres, restez petits et allez me chercher des passagers pour venir m'alimenter. L'Éthiopien doit participer, comme on a dit à l'Éthiopien, à la création de richesses sur la route, participer à la gestion du déficit sur la route pour aider les autres à grandir. On n'a pas envie d'être des bonsaïs, c'est-à-dire de vieux arbres qui restent petits, mais tellement bien coiffés, on a l'impression qu'ils sont beaux. On a envie de grandir aussi. Aujourd'hui, notre compagnie, pour parler des Côte d'Ivoire, on était à, six, euh, à trois avions, il a dit, c'est trop difficile. Cette année, on va finir à 12 avions. L'année prochaine, on va finir à 16 avions. Aujourd'hui, l'année dernière, Air Côte d'Ivoire a gagné de l'argent. Cette année, on va en gagner. L'année prochaine, on va en gagner. Et on va continuer à grandir. Et quand on aura fini de grandir, on, parce que le, 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 pour alimenter la connexion, vous le savez mieux que moi, il faut faire ce qu'on appelle de la densité. Pour faire du Hub and Spoke, il faut de la densité. Pour faire de la densité, il faut des avions. Pour faire des avions, il faut des, des moyens. Il faut une entreprise profitable. Donc nous, nous n'allons pas rester petits et aller alimenter l'Éthiopienne, comme vous l'avez demandé. Nous allons grandir et nous-mêmes faire certaines choses par nous-mêmes. Voilà, voilà mon point de vue là-dessus. Fear for one another, mistrust for one another, is what holds African aviation down. And we have seen it during Air Africa days, we have seen it during Nigerian Airways day, we have seen it during East African Airways. I believe the only way is to grow together, to work together and make the scale tilt. Every choir, every choir, you can work a special progress between yourselves so that the airline that runs on a shorter sector, if you go by normal progression, your money will be too small. There must be a way of talking to one another because traffic needs to grow. If we stay in the silo that we are in, we are not going to help Africa. We are not going to help ourselves. Therefore, there must be change of attitude. My generation was in that type of war. It did not help. I don't want my children to be in that type of an attitude and remain small to grow You have to pull one another up. And I believe Afra should talk to your, to your members to really work together. Airlines from outside have started what they call the last mile. What do they do? They go to an African carrier. They say, you will be my last mile partner. I will give you what you need, but bring the market to me. Why can't African carriers create that type 
of last mile between themselves and grow traffic in Africa. Abdurrahman, do you, do you have an idea? Yes, thank you, Ato Gilma. As I said uh, during my first intervention, you can see through this discussion that our role is not uh, easy as TAFRA because we have all size of uh, operators and uh, we work for a common interest of uh, all our, uh, our members. As you have said, you need to work together to grow together. Uh, for that reason, uh, at AFRA, we have a root network uh, coordination committee. Rafael Kuchi was moderating the former uh, session, is uh, in charge of uh, this committee. And uh, next week, on 26 and 27, we'll have a very important meeting in, uh, in Nairobi regarding this committee. We want to launch during our next AGA in uh, Cairo what we call a root intelligence portal. And uh, the objective is uh, really to see how to improve the connectivity in Africa. And for that, this committee aims to see 15 uh, member airlines of AFRA will attend in Nairobi in person this meeting, is to see how airlines can uh, cooperate uh, together to feed, to defeat, uh, and um, also negotiate a pro-rate agreement, as we have said. And, uh, this is what we are doing. We are offering our members uh, this uh, opportunity really to work together. Uh, we can, you can compete at the same time. You can uh, collaborate and work together. That's what uh, AFRA we are doing. Thank you. Okay. With that, what I will do is open a floor for discussion. Wrap up. <laughs> I'm told to wrap up. At least I have seen two hands raised. Can I give them a one minute uh, each chance? Okay. Merci, uh, merci aux panélistes, en tout cas, d'avoir apporté beaucoup d'éclairage. Je suis Jean Noël Iliboudo. Je suis chef de la division infrastructure pour la région Afrique de l'Ouest à la Banque africaine de développement. J'ai une question pour euh, les panélistes. Beaucoup de choses intéressantes ont été dites. Et j'ai particulièrement retenu euh, que la taille du marché du transport aérien est un grand défi, en particulier pour la région Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre. Alors, je voulais poser la question aux panélistes de savoir quel est l'impact de la libéralisation du ciel africain sur ce trafic parce que je crois savoir que la, libéralis la libéralisation du ciel africain a permis à des, des compagnies extra-africaines de faire des connexions intérieures au continent ce qui naturellement affaiblit donc euh, le marché pour les compagnies euh, intra-africaines donc je voulais avoir votre point de vue sur euh, cette situation et voir l'impact sur euh, euh, ce, ce, cette baisse du trafic comparée aux autres facteurs qui affectent le trafic. Merci. Thank you. And uh, yes, the lady, for the lady. Bonjour, je suis Salima Takeita, je suis consultante. Ma question s'adresse aux représentants de Air Côte d'Ivoire. Euh, Aujourd'hui, j'aurais voulu venir de Paris par Air Côte d'Ivoire. Bon, je suis venue par Air France, c'est aussi bien. Euh, pourquoi on tarde à avoir un pari euh, Abidjan par Air Côte d'Ivoire Est-ce parce que Air France est actionnaire dans Air Côte d'Ivoire et y a-t-il un conflit d'intérêts Ça reste un grand mystère. Donc, euh, parce que vous parlez de croissance, euh, que vous avez une croissance exponentielle, mais euh, intra-régionale, et pourquoi pas internationale On a des Air Algérie, on a Air enfin, Kenya, on a, et pourquoi pas Air Côte d'Ivoire euh, à l'international Okay. Anybody wants to answer the first question? Uh, okay. I can take the first question. I want to just to answer that the single African air transport market is for African operators. 
it uh, does not uh, concern at all the non-African non operators. Some non-African operators are operating fifth freedom traffic rights it's, uh, uh, in Africa. It's because the governments are giving them this right to operate for maybe uh, root economics reason. That's what I wanted uh, just uh, to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Euh, je me permettrai de, 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 de compléter ce qu'il a dit avant de répondre à la dame. Ça, c'est très rapide. Monsieur, ce que vous avez dit est, est, est juste, mais euh, la libéralisation du ciel, aérien, euh, du ciel africain, pour moi, et je le disais au président, au vice-président de la BAD, n'a pas apporté grand-chose. Moi, je mets le, le, le pied dans le plat sur les sujets. Ça a permis aux mastodontes d'écraser les compagnies locales. Je vous donne encore des chiffres. Vous avez 55 pays en Afrique. Sur les 55, vous n'avez que 5 qui ont des compagnies pour aller aux États-Unis. Que 5. Tout le marché est porté par des compagnies étrangères. Je vous prends encore un chiffre. Madame l'a dit, si vous prenez de Kinshasa jusqu'à à, à, à Nouachok, c'est libéralisé. Le ciel est libéralisé. Vous avez zéro compagnie nationale qui fait le long courrier. Le long courrier est fait par des compagnies étrangères. Alors, c est, c est, c est, enfin, je ne comprends pas le point de dire la libéralisation a accru le trafic. Ce n'est pas, pas juste. Mieux, sur Accra Abidjan, sur Accra Abidjan, nous avons quatre compagnies, dont Emirates. Est-ce que vous pensez qu'une compagnie africaine peut aller faire Doha, Dubaï, soyons un peu cohérents. Donc euh, voilà, pour moi, la libéralisation, c'est bien, mais il faut encore ne pas mettre en compétition Usain Bolt et mon fils. Voilà, donc il faut faire les choses dans, graduellement avec euh, tout ce qui l'accompagne. Pour répondre à madame, le long courrier pour Côte d'Ivoire est prévu euh, cette année. Malheureusement, Airbus ne pourra pas livrer l'avion. Nous avons commandé 2, 3, 30, 900. Donc, ce sera au premier trimestre euh, 2025. Avant de faire le long courrier, nous avons tenu à réussir le régional. Aujourd'hui, nous desservons 22 pays. Nous savons que si nous lançons, par exemple, demain Londres, ça ne sera pas que Abidjan, Londres, mais ce seront 20 pays qui ramèneront chacun peut-être 10 passagers avant d'aller à Londres. Donc, on a passé le temps à construire la fondation avant de lancer euh, le long courrier. Avec l'aide des France, contrairement à ce qui est dit, Air France nous soutient et joue le jeu. Voilà, merci. OK. I'm, uh... OK, thank you. I, I would like to say a few words uh, uh, regarding uh, SAT. If we want to develop the air transport market in Africa, And if we want the countries to benefit from this, if we want air transport to support the economic growth of every country, we have no choice but to liberalize the market. Definitely, liberalization will have pressure on uh, airlines in Africa, but it will give them the impetus to become stronger and be compete. The other option is to exercise protectionism, to protect our national airlines and leave and lose the benefit of air transport, expanding air transport in enhancing the economic growth of the continent. This is a choice Africa has to make, really. Okay. So this is my last point. Thank you. I think that's a very good conclusion. And I say thank you the, to the panelists. But there is something that I would like to say as an old man in aviation. I believe, I believe it is not important for Africa to have 50 airlines. America has four major airlines. 
Europe has come down to four or five major carriers. Africa will have to see how to really take the continent out of this miserable traveling condition within Africa. And I leave that to the governments, to the people, to really see what is necessary and what is good for them to develop. We cannot stop African from traveling to benefit few carriers. This does not, the carriers should be there to serve people, not the people to serve the carrier. With that, I would say thank you very much, and thank you to the panelists.